Fellow Montrealers, tonight I am here to inform you that after 25 years of service to this community, I am leaving public life. When I was a young man, my father told me not to get into politics because it was dirty and would destroy me. But the course I would follow was determined by my passion and my love for Quebec and for Montreal. I committed all my energy to it and I gave it my all. When I decided to run for mayor of the new city of Montreal, I knew I would be inheriting a city technically bankrupt with a democratic deficit. With chronic underinvestment in infrastructures, not much compassion for the most needy of our society, no transportation plan, a moratorium on the development of green spaces, no cultural policy, and no shared vision for the Montreal metropolitan community. When I was sworn in, I said that this was the challenge of a lifetime, the challenge of my life. Hoping for support from the government of Quebec, which was supposed to create a new city at that time, I dedicated myself to the success of Montreal, based on my Judeo-Christian values of helping one another in solidarity, integrity, openness, respect for human dignity, social justice, and peace. The past 11 years were rich and unforgettable, but I also live very difficult Mormon, an ordeal which I would never wish to anyone to live. Whether it was the municipal merger, the unfinished mandate of the transition committee, the hours, nights, days, months, years to innovate, to re reconcile the wishes of those elected from the old city and from the older suburbs, or to manage relationships in the day-to-day -day life of the city. And then, a new government in the name of democracy was allowing the mergers, which created a period of more tumult and reorganization. Despite the lack of support from governments, the city gave its citizens a voice with the Office de Consultation Publique, the creation of the Ombudsman, as well as a Montreal Charter of Rights and Responsibilities. The financial picture has improved, and our city was given a credit rating of AA2 by Moody's. It will remain, however, always fragile, as long as the main source of revenue remains the property taxes. Our city nowadays is more attractive. Concrete actions are being taken to help the most needy. Public transportation has finally been recognized as a priority. Strategies and policies are integrated upstream of major projects, and the Montreal metropolitan community is now united and speaks with one strong voice for the first time. Montreal is a UNESCO city of design and has many major projects, the Quartier des Spectacles, the Montreal Technopole for Help and Care and Innovation, the Montreal Harbourfront, and soon the first world-class space dedicated to the life of mankind and nature, l'espace pour la vie. We are building the future. Today, Montreal is developing on solid grounds, generating more and more wealth, has an influence on the international network of cities, enjoys a broad international reach, and is more and more frequently cited as a dream city with a great quality of life. And in 2017, for its 375th anniversary, Montreal will be recognized globally as a city of creators and as a world-class cultural metropolis. Let's take pride in that. And let's remind ourselves of it today and every day. In 2001, during my first meeting with the city director general, he told me there were rumors about brown envelopes circulating in some departments. I asked him what he had done. His response was that he asked for evidence, but no one has ever given any. I've always promoted the values of integrity, honesty, and respect. I committed all my energy to the best interests of our city. Given the magnitude of the challenges, I have delegated responsibilities and put my trust in fellow elected officials and the municipal public servants. 
Was I skeptical? Yes. Did I ask questions? Yes. Was I vigilant? Yes. But unfortunately, it was only after the facts that I was given documents, files, and international memos dating from 2004, 2006, and 2009. When I finally received the information, I asked the public servants and the councillors why I had not been informed about this, especially when the individuals in, in charge had done nothing. When this information, I can assure you, the current contre-car project and the water meters would not have happened. The trust I had on some was inevitably betrayed. I assume full responsibility. However, every time, as soon as I was informed of irregularities, collusion or corruption, I took action. The information was immediately given to the appropriate authorities. I shall produce the proof at the right time and at the right place. The case of the Société d'Habitation et Développement de Montréal was corrected in 2008. The water meter contract was nullified. In 2009, even as a storm raged, I decided to seek a third mandate because I sincerely believe that I was the best person to complete the cleanup. I fervently hope that one day there will be recognition about the fact that I fought, often alone, this system of collusion and corruption as the Charbonneau Commission is revealing it has existed since at least 1988. At my request, three administrative reports were ordered in 2009 and 2010, following which we have implemented at the City of Montreal the most severe mechanism with respect to the procedure of granting contracts. As for the allegations of collusion and corruption, I would have expected a more attentive and more urgent hearing from the government, especially when dealing with the obligation to, to award contracts to the lowest bidders. In politics, it seems that perception matters more than the truth, especially when this perception is manipulated by multiple factors, not to say agendas. And when we're not given a chance to reveal the truth, or when it is stated, no one believes it. The truth is what I gave to the Charbonneau Commission. Unfortunately, I do not have the possibility of defending myself because I am not part of the Commission's game plan, at least in the short term. But tonight, I want to tell you this. I was never informed on July the 2nd, 2009, that there were four suspicious individuals in my entourage. Fortunately, my chief of staff did attend the meeting in question, and he confirms the facts. One day, the hidden agenda of certain people will come to light. I was never present at any meeting in the electoral offices of Union Montréal in the borough of Saint Laurent in 2004, where I supposedly was told about double bookkeeping. This meeting never took place. The allegations are false, as confirmed by my official agent, who himself wants to be heard by the Commission as soon as possible. I now must suffer in an unbearable injustice. I never thought my life could be subject to such a fury in a society of law and justice. But one day, justice will prevail. Under these circumstances, I cannot help anymore. The success of our city is much more important than my personal interests. I do want you to know that with these crooks gone, the foundation of the city are strongly built. And in the hands of thousands of women and men of integrity who are capable and dedicated to public service and who share a passion for Montreal. I thank them for their loyal support through these many years. To my political family, my deepest um, appreciation goes to you 
as you were always there, for better and for worse. I will never forget these moments and those enduring memories. I would like to acknowledge the unfailing and exceptional support of Raymond Bachin. He truly is committed to our city. My heartfelt thanks to my close and faithful assistants and collaborators for their loyalty and commitment. To those in recent days that have been at my side and encouraged me, I tell you that our paths will cross again. To those who relied and trusted me all these years, I want you to know that I have never, never betrayed you. I'm, not, I'm now going back home, confident in knowing who I am, to find a woman I love profoundly and who has always been by my side, to my children who won't have to worry anymore, and I will spend more time with my family and my friends who have always been alongside with me. This decision today is for me the ultimate sacrifice my last act of love for the best interests of our Montreal. I sincerely hope that the person you will choose to succeed me in November 2013 will have the same passion for Montreal as I have. Have a good evening.